first of all, let me say some <coughs> words to uh, those people who sacrificed their life and their time uh, for Tibet, especially inside and also outside in the diaspora. For me, uh, it's a such important uh, opportunity to represent inside people to deliver their situation um, here with uh, all of your brother and sister here. Um, I think in Tibet now it's a really um, it's in a turning point of history. I think um, so by focusing on this topic, um, I wanted to share the knowledge through my two um, field. One is uh, my academic findings. The second is my uh, first-hand information from my field work over the last, um, from 2015 to 2020. Um, today, we're gathering I see this is this conference, this gathering it's a such important uh, meeting with all of you. It's uh, from the, from the forty countries who tirelessly doing the work in supporting Tibetan cause. I personally I would like to appreciate it very deeply. Uh, when I get out, all my other colleagues and friends, they send a message, said, Jalo, when you get out, don't forget us. Don't forget us. This is a, a quite emotional, or quite emotional. Um, I'm not sure how much I can represent them, but I will try my best to describe, to illustrate the detailed situation inside, particularly going to focus on boarding schools, because I had been struggling for the education system with China nearly 30 years. I gone through their education system. I also am the uh, experienced person who in the boarding school when I was a child, the end of the Cultural Revolution. Um, so this gathering is about clearly it's about to ensure the sustainability of Tibet. In order to sustain the Tibet, it's about to how you prepare for the future. The preparing for the future is about education. The future is highly, heavily depends on what education we have today. For particularly for insight, and I think could address it outside. If we lost, if we lost our education in our, from our hands, then that means we lost the future. Because the society informed by culture, culture practiced by people. People are produced from education system. No other way. So now, the, over the last four, 45 years, let's say from 1979 to 
2020. Um, our four generations inside the people were entered the colonial boarding school. The colonial boarding school is a large scale that China implementing as a theoretical ideological conspiracy of the colonization. The colonization, in order to accomplish the colonization, they found the education is the only one thing that they can weaponize to completely erase Tibet. We often hear many the words many times um, eradicating culture and the language. Then the question comes out, how? We need to be able to answer this, how the, is it China eradicating Tibetan language, culture, and the religion. So the China put our 88% of the population, this young generation, into the boarding school. 88%. Um, that's across Tibet, it's no exception. From Wichang to come from, from come to Amdo, no, there's no exception. Every kid, school age kids, has to be in the school. That means you have to be in boarding school. Because of the compulsory education policy, that allows them to allow China to force all of the parents and the kids to attend the school. So, can you imagine after the 45 years, those four generations educated as a cheap laborers? At, uh, on the other hand. There are fit neither Tibetan society nor Chinese society. That's completely lowered down to the ground, to the bottom of the social capacity. That's why people frustrated spiritually, mentally. The people who suffered, then they can't hold their minds, they can't hold their emotion. Then they did that, much, that many people did the self emulation It's not a simple decision and a choice. We, wanna, we don't want to burn ourselves. But the long time pressure that produced caused that. The body school, it's a simple, China say, you have to body, this is the only way we, we have uh, to provide the education for Tibet people. They're lying. They have a facility, they have a fine economic uh, resource, they have uh, conditions to build a school beside every village. But they did not. They shut down they have in the school in the 2009. Then, the, what has China been doing about schooling inside Tibet? We have a three types of boarding school in, in Tibet. One is established generally in 1979, and the second type of boarding school established in 1984. They took our middle school educate to the every in the capital city of Chinese province. They have in the, the Chinese called the Nidis Bank. 
Every week, they only have one, one so Tibetan class. That's not enough. China thinks that's not enough to push down to the Tibet. Since 2016, they carried out the colonial boarding preschool. They think the previous boarding school is not enough to knock down the Tibet. The Cultural Revolution not, was not enough to crack down Tibet. But they think now it's time to take their kids as young as age four to five, six kids in the boarding preschool, having like a military style administration in the school. Can you imagine? This time, when those kids came out, three months after the three months, they became a stranger at their home. After the seven years last year, those kids confidently stand out, criticizing their parents not speaking, not be able to speak in Mandarin. This is a significant shift. This is a significant shift. Before, the, after three months, they just afraid to speak the mixed language with their parents. They just quiet and they sit there as a stranger or guest at their home. Seven years after, they start confidently stand up and then criticizing their parents are not being able to speak in Mandarin. Can you imagine? This is a cross in Tibet. It's not only certain region, it's all of Tibet. Because the colonial boarding preschool is entered college, the compulsory education policy. No kids can be escaped. But by the social fabric, a few of them who lived in the urban contact, they can be day school. But 70, 70% of our population still remain in the remote area. Then those areas, you have to be boarding. One day, in two, from 2017 to 19, I did a survey, I did a field work about the colonial boarding preschool. I be able, be, had been visited 50 to 52. Some of the young mother cry before they speak out, saying, Jello, you know, I as a mother, our life is so difficult. But unless I, I have a kid, child to hug in the evening when I came back from the field, but now not, they're not there. They're taken away to the school, boarding school, and every Friday evening they can pick up and then have to drop them back to the school on Sunday evening. Can you imagine those age four to six kids in the colonial boarding school under the military style of the administration? How painful is This is a cultural discontinuity of the life's experience. It's a psychological shift from a parent from home to the completely strange area. They need to build new psychological foundation by removing the previous foundation. The education system is doing this. So if we want our future, then we 
get back to education in our hand first. <coughs> so that came to my mind, my analysis. So the, all of you, brother and the sister who are sitting here, we need to increase our quality of the collaboration between each other group to increase the international pressure on China to stop this before it gets too late. Because, <laughs> because it's a timely so urgent, I think. Those kids, this boarding school system style, if we not be able to stop, prevent them, and in the 15, 20 years, then we'll get too late, I think. Um, and uh, as everybody knows, the His Holiness is always messaging us, encouraging us, I will live until next more 15 years, 20 years. What does that mean? I said, to me, it's urgent. It's an urgency, serious urgency. For national urgency, it's not a personal urgency. We have, time is not our side. I said, we need to increase the quality of the uh, activity, movement, and the quality of the collaboration. That will allow us to increase the support of the country more. Last day we got the 20, I hope in the, within the next few years we got the 80 countries. Then that will make a huge pressure on China that they have no choice. They have to change their policy. They have to change their education policy. So in that way we can get back education in our hand, then we will be able to plan our future. Without uh, get the education schools, education back to our hand, then we can't plan the future. Because the China, everything is China designed in their way, not for our way. So I genuinely encourage every one of you, sisters and brother, to uh, continue to put the effort and the time and energy to increase our quality of the work for Tibet. Thanks so much.